Hey guys, welcome to another Friday video. We're checking out another budget Ryzen gaming PC. This time I went out and bought the cheapest AM4 mainboard from AliExpress. It's from Soyo with the A320 chipset. That means we can't overclock the processor. We can overclock the RAM, which we will be doing, but not the CPU. So what you can do is get one of the X processors. This one is the Ryzen 5 1600X. You can think of these processors as being factory overclocked and that might be a really good combination. Save a bit of money on the mainboard, invest a bit of money into a overclock processor and let's see what we can do with this combination. We will also have a chat about what is better value going with the cheapest A320 mainboard and the 1600X or spending a little bit more on a B450 mainboard, saving a little bit by going with the Ryzen 1600 and doing the overclocking manually. So which one of these is better value? Are there any benefits? We have benchmarks, power consumption results and a lot of games. But to begin with in my videos, I like to talk about the hardware in a bit more detail. So let's have a closer look at this main board. Um, it's tiny, so that's even a little bit smaller than Micro ADX. Um, and yeah, it will look fairly bare bone in your case. We do get a PCI Express 16 and two 1X slots. We have a USB front header, a USB 2 front header, four SATA 3 ports and two RAM slots. So all the usual stuff is there. But what is missing is a M.2 slot. So on this one, you can also only use uh, SATA drives, no M.2. In terms of support, there is a website. It's all in Chinese. It does mention the specifications. There is a BIOS download, but it's the same version that this main board came with. So since um, 2018, no BIOS update. So it will not support the Ryzen 3600, for example. In terms of which CPUs are supported, no idea. Um, these specifications are very vague. I could only see a 95 watt uh, being mentioned. So I guess that's as high as you can uh, take this main board. At the back, we have the usual ports, PS2, four USB 2, two USB 3. There's VGA and HDMI if you're using an APU, gigabit ethernet and audio output ports. And now let's talk about the processors. So the main difference between the 1600 and 1600X is that the 1600X is clocked higher. It's got an all core turbo speed of 3.7 gigahertz. So this is the speed you will see in most games, whereas the Ryzen 1600 will run at 3.2 gigahertz. There is also a difference in power consumption. The 1600X has a higher TDP of 95 watts, whereas the Ryzen 1600 has a TDP of uh, 60 watts, I believe. And so you might be wondering, well, if this one runs at 3.7 gigahertz, um, you can just get a B450 mainboard, overclock that from uh, to 3.7 and they will perform the same. And initially, yes, I, I thought that is correct. However, this one has uh, a maximum turbo boost of up to four gigahertz, which should kick in if only one or two cores are being utilized. And I'm looking forward to seeing if that actually works in games. It might be a feature that's more usable for very specific applications. So yeah, that's something we will find out and see if it makes a difference. For RAM, we're going with 16 gigabytes and I got some really good feedback from you guys. So we're using, once again, the Kingspec 16 gigabyte RAM kit overclocked to 3200 megahertz with CL22. And I got a lot of comments about the slow timings. So we're using a second RAM kit. And at the end of the video, we're gonna do a comparison. This one has a memory profile. It will also run at 3200 megahertz, but with CL16. So looking forward to seeing if there's a difference. For the video card, the value is definitely with the RX 400 and 500 graphics cards. You can get the second hand on AliExpress. This is one I bought from eBay Australia. It's the MSI RX 580 with eight gigabytes of video RAM. However, I have bought a RX 480 with eight gigabytes of VRAM from AliExpress from around, I think 130 US dollars. So that's a very decent price. And it is these video cards are fast enough to run 1080p high details, 60 FPS plus. And thanks to the eight gigabytes of VRAM, that should also give you a bit of uh, future proving uh, for games and when the next generation of consoles, for example, hit the market. We are using a 750 watt power supply from Thermaltake. 
under idle sitting on a desktop I measured 66 watts for the entire system and running Cinebench R20 the system consumed 145 watts. For the CPU cooler we're trying out the Arctic Alpine AM4CO. I bought this one from Amazon and unfortunately it arrived broken. This plastic bit was snapped off. Otherwise it's fairly easy to install. Um, initially I wasn't sure how to mount the cooler. Uh, you just have to, yeah, you have to push down here. Uh, it just clips on onto the frame so there are no screws to tighten and yep no copper core so fairly standard stuff it did an okay job with the cooling but really it's just a basic cooler and if you already have a boxed cooler I don't think this is much of an upgrade and for storage I'm back to using the StarTech RAID drive bay this lets me use two uh, one terabyte SSDs in a RAID 0 configuration not really for performance this is basically just so I can get two terabytes out of two drives. The prices uh, are still better on one terabyte drive. So I'm patiently waiting for a, uh, more, a better brand <laughs> to be available in two terabytes at a good price. But prices are coming down not fast enough for me. So this will have to do. Uh, performance is okay. I got a few comments about king spec quality not being good and drives failing and so on. But um, I really haven't had too many issues. All I'm doing is running a few games. I'm not running a server or anything like that. So for the purpose of running the YouTube channel and having enough storage with plenty of games on it, it, yep, it does what I want it to do. Let's have a look at some benchmarks. In Cinebench R15 we're getting 1240. In Cinebench R20 we're getting 2675. And the Blender benchmark completed in 28 minutes and 26 seconds. And now we're going to have a look at some games. First up we have Doom, Strange Brigade, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, The Search, Apex Legends, Battlefield 1, 60-player uh, map, Far Cry 5, and also The Witcher 3. I will put the game name titles down below in the video. Everything runs at 1080p with high details, and all the games run at 60 plus FPS, so very decent performance. Tumbling trickery there. Grenade! Jonah, I'm in. Good. Those guards weren't at the gate earlier. Dominguez must suspect something. Excuse me. a new kill leader. We have taken objective Charlie.
so. A griffin this close to the village. Strange. My thoughts exactly. In the forest of the mountains, sure, but here? And near the main road. Maybe it's the war. Corpses everywhere, the stench of blood, burnt flesh. Drives monsters crazy sometimes. Men too. And now we're gonna have a look at some racing games. We have Dirt 3, Dirt 4, Dirt Rally. Grid 2 and Project Cars 2, so a mix of older and newer titles. The older games, Dirt 3 and Grid 2, they run at 1080p with ultra details and 4x anti-aliasing. The other games run at 1080p with high details and all of them run at 60 plus FPS, so we're getting excellent performance. We've got a good chance at a top 3 finish now. There's been a spin out ahead of you. Alright, you lost it. Catch up with them. Right five. Eighty through dip. Left two. Into left two over crest. And right four. Through gate. Left four. And caution. Right two over crest. Into right two. 80 through dip. Left two. Right five. 80 down. Bump dip. Left six over crest. 60 down. Caution. Right five. 60 down. Right five don't cut, it's turn, left forward, half long, it's turn, left three long. Into right five don't cut, 60. Right six long. And finally, does it run Crisis? And this is the test that I was looking forward to to see if the maximum turbo of 4 gigahertz is gonna work. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to kick in in this game. I actually had to seek through the video to find a screenshot where one of the cores actually hits 4 gigahertz, but that was just a brief moment. And it felt just like a Ryzen 1600 or 1700 manually overclocked to 3.7 gigahertz. So most of the time it is very playable, but uh, in many areas it just doesn't hit the 60 FPS. So yeah, an even higher clock speed or a newer gen Ryzen processor is needed to play Crisis at 60 FPS locked in 2019. So guys, also we gotta come back to the question, are you better off getting the cheapest mainboard with the better 1600X processor or is it worth investing a bit more in a B450 mainboard, sticking with the regular 1600 and doing a bit of manual overclocking. So let's have a look at the prices. For the A320 board, you're looking at uh, $57 and the 1600X was $101, so $158 all up. Whereas for the B450 mainboard, $80 for the Ryzen 1600, $87 total, $167. So you're looking at $9 more and uh, to go with the B450 board and the 1600. And what you get? Well, firstly, you have to do manually uh, manual overclocking, which means you can actually you could take it further by increasing voltage and just having a yeah, bit of silicon lottery uh, luck, so to speak. Also, you're getting a M.2 slot and this main board has better support. There is a BIOS that supports the Ryzen 3600, for example. So um, considering all of this, while this solution going with the A320 and the 1600X might be easier for beginners because you don't have to uh, do any overclock, you get faster performance out of the box. I think you're better off going with the B450 and the 1600. It just, it just gives you more options. You get a nicer mainboard, a better BIOS support for the Ryzen 3600, and you get an M.2 NVMe slot as well. 
and I did some some comparisons in games like uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, sorry, Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Far Cry 5. And in these two games, they are built-in benchmarks, so a random and to be honest, I could not really detect much of a difference. So what is happening? I believe what we're seeing is that in these games we are simply bottlenecked by the video card and that investing in, in faster memory, uh, we just can't see the difference. So my recommendation with the RAM is absolutely do shop around. You want to have the highest frequency and the lowest CL timings, absolutely. But um, it does not seem to make a huge difference in a lot of games when you're using graphical settings that stress the video card. So guys, we went out and bought the cheapest AM4 mainboard. You're looking at $57 with the A320 chipset and we ended up spending a little bit more on the processor, $101, the 1600X, which is factory overclocked and will come with a, uh, an all-core turbo speed of 3.7 gigahertz. And we saw that the performance is legit. It will run pretty much any game at 60 FPS plus. And also the RX 580 with 8 gigabytes of VRAM is a perfect match for running games at high details and 1080p. It does a marvelous job. And if you have a FreeSync monitor, you can also play around with uh, adaptive sync technology and getting rid of tearing while still having low input latency. So very interesting. Now, um, the other benefit is that you don't have to overclock. So this is something you can probably recommend to a beginner um, uh, that they're not familiar with overclocking. They don't want to experiment with the voltages and trying to find a stable uh, balance between low heat output and the high frequency. And you can still overclock the RAM. Now, we had a look at the RAM performance. Uh, in this situation, I could not measure a huge difference, maybe one or two FPS uh, back and forth, something like that. So my recommendation is um, do shop around and of course, you want to pick the best RAM kit for the money that you can get, um, but it's not an area where I see you having to invest um, huge amounts of money. Um, you're much better putting that money towards a better processor, maybe a better cooler to do some more overclocking, but if you can, a better video card. The problem with the video card is past the RX 400 and 500, there is not much, there's nothing really that I can recommend. Um, uh, to get a, a Vega 56 or um, uh, a Radeon 5700, you have to spend significantly more money. The um, RX 5500, we don't know what the pricing will be like, so and also how it compares in performance. Um, and remember, for 130 US dollars, you can get an RX 480 with eight gigabytes of VRAM used from AliExpress, and that's a fairly, that's a very good value to be honest. So, um, not impressed with the video card prices. Hopefully, things will change um, in in the next year. That's something to look forward to. But at least we're getting really good value with the processors. Um, really impressed with all these Ryzen CPUs. Um, basically, so far, every Ryzen pre, uh, Ryzen CPU we used, uh, performance was brilliant. Um, it's only if you use um, a non-X CPU on an A320 motherboard, then the clock speed is fairly low and you will run into issues uh, in, in games like uh, Far Cry 5 where it just doesn't quite hit that 60 FPS mark. But yeah, if you have a FreeSync monitor, that's fine. You can play Silky Smooth at 45 or 50 FPS and have an excellent experience. And the other parts, the memory worked just fine. Also very happy with the Thermaltake power supply. We will continue using um, them going forward. The Arctic cooling, bit of a disappointment. It arrived broken and it really doesn't do that much different compared to the uh, boxed cooler. Uh, but you need to buy a CPU cooler when you buy uh, a Ryzen processor from AliExpress. They do not come with a processor cooler. And with the SSDs at the moment, pretty happy. But if you see a good deal on a two terabyte drive, do let me know. I am uh, with Amazon Prime, so if anything pops up there, leave a comment down below in the description, but also the usual places like AliExpress, Newegg, eBay, and so on. So um, hopefully two terabyte drives will become affordable soon, and then I can use that for my projects. And yeah, guys, that's it for this video. So another fun project with cheap Ryzen parts from AliExpress, and 
Hopefully you found it interesting. If there's anything else you want to see with the Ryzen stuff, do let me know. It does take me four to five weeks to get certain parts, but that is okay. I've got plenty of other parts that we can play around with in the near future. And as always, if you found the video interesting, please subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, give it a like, uh, share it with your friends, and I shall see you soon with another one.